So what it's doing is it's going to make you go. <coughs> hmm, that was interesting. Or. What are you doing? You're swallowing it down. <laughs> You're swallowing it down. The hope is that all the stuff that was in there, okay, is going to the stomach, stomach acid will kill it, and you'll be fine. Just saying. Okay? So, Celia's job on these cells is to make sure that, that mucus continues to woo and push it back up. And get rid of it. All right. Still, it's found on other cells, but that's the one that's the coolest. Flagella. This one, similar, but definitely longer. There's only supposedly one per cell where they're found. And the best example is the human sperm cell. And note they are extensions of microtubules. They work in a whip-like fashion, all right? Because sperm cell, when they're released, they want to go find the egg. They're on the hunt, all right? And they want to move fast, all right? And it does that for them, and they're gone, okay? In their hunt, because think about it. At this level, these are cells whose only focus is procreation, making sure that the species continues to live. Now, microvilli. These are pretty cool. All right. What you're going to see, these are found within the digestive system. Did y'all dissect the frog in high school? Believe it or not, we... We, we had it, all right, but I refused to touch the frog when I was in high school. I know, and here I am now, cup anything, okay? How did I go from one point to the next? I don't know, okay? But if you were to cut something up, and if you were to take the intestines out, and if you were to cut out all of that little membrane that's holding it together and stretch those intestines out and then cut along the middle of them and open them up. When you open them up, you find all these microvilli. Now, here's their structure, though. Their structure, these filaments from part of the cytoskeleton, as those filaments begin to project upward and outward, it pushes the cell's membrane. So you end up with these structures all throughout the digestive system. What would be the benefit of being able to stretch out and create and have more cell membrane? I have increased the surface area. Why is this beneficial in the intestines? Because you might get a blockage. Because all my food stuffs that I have eaten, I need to make sure that as it goes through my digestive system, begins to enter into my small intestines, <coughs> that as it does, I'm absorbing every nutrient I can from that food stuff. More cell membrane that I have, the more surface area I have. So microvilli, don't confuse them with cilia, okay? They are different, and they're found in different areas. So in summary, the cell. No matter how many times I've taught this topic, I'm always amazed at the cell. Because the cell, first of all, microscopic, 
but it has all of these components to it. It's maintaining homeostasis. It's carrying out every single characteristic of life, all right? And it's the place, the point, the area, the, the, the part at which everything occurs. So to me, the cell is amazing. Now, at this point in time, we have now worked our way from the smallest component, which was our elements, okay? We went from elements to molecules to the cell. So this is the point that we're at right now. As we continue to work our way from the smallest to the largest. One of the things that's going to become important in chapter four, you'll notice I only have 13 slides, okay? Mainly because chapter four goes through all of the information about genetics. That is not my job, okay? The one part of chapter four that is important to us, okay, is going to be how these components, the DNA, the mRNA, all right, are going to make products, all right? That is what I'm looking for you to understand from chapter four. So, here's what's going to happen. In the nucleus of our cell, all right, we've got DNA. Now, let's review for a second. How many molecules of DNA do you have in your cell? 46, 23 pairs, okay? On a molecule of DNA, which can be millions of base pairs long. What do I mean by a base pair? That's going to be that A to T, G to C, or A to U, or G to C. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Now, in that huge strand of DNA, where it's going to have all these base pairs, with me. Okay? Now, because DNA is a double-stranded helix, it would have the complementary uh, strand attached to it. A to T, T to A, G to C, C to G. Does everybody remember that? Okay? Now, for how many base bases does it take to code for one amino acid? Three. So for every three bases, For every three bases, I code for an amino acid. Now, 
amino acids strung together give me the primary structure of a protein. Structure determines function. Okay? So, this information right here on this DNA strand is going to be found only in my nucleus. So in the nucleus of the cell, this is where I find my DNA, and on the DNA, I find my genes, and the genes are coded with the base pairs that will line up the amino acids that will make a protein. Yes, no, maybe. Okay. So, there are, two pro there are two things, okay, note my terminology, two things a cell has to do. The cell needs to be able to duplicate, if that's what it's supposed to do, and the cell needs to be able to make the protein. These are two different processes. To do the making of a protein, which is our protein synthesis, okay, this requires transcription and translation. Do you guys remember those? Transcription occurs in my nucleus. Transcription requires RNA. So if I'm in my nucleus and if this is my DNA strand and it's time to make this protein, I'm going to need RNA to do that. For transcription, RNA needs to come in and it needs to copy my protein information. So if it was going to copy the protein information and A matches to what? For my RNA, matches to a U, T matches to G. Okay, y'all make sure that I create my strand correctly. All right? Drew my line too quick. All right, did I do that correctly? All right, so now I have my messenger RNA strand because this is my messenger RNA. Messenger. This is what gets to leave my nucleus. So that whole thing, that's now like a, okay. Have y'all ever seen movies where something is older and it looks like the news is coming through on this little ticker tape with like the piece of paper running through a machine and they get to read what's coming off of that machine, okay? Yeah, I'm like really showing my age. But I can't think of another way to explain it, okay? So that messenger RNA looks like that piece of, piece of ticker tape that leaves the nucleus, and it's got all these bases on it. As it leaves the nucleus, it now will get transcri translated. 
So, translation occurs in the cytoplasm. This